Hi guys and welcome to another quick video tutorial here on the Kiki Manny Photography and Orms blog. My name is Manny and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys part 3 of Photoshop basics and tools. Yes that's right, basics again. If you're new to this tutorial please view uh, tutorial part 1 and part 2 on Photoshop basics and tools as well if you're new to this program. Alright so let's get started. In today's tutorial I will pretty much show you guys two new tools and pretty much just the crop tool and over here the eyedropper tool and color sample tool. Now in the crop tool mode you also get slice tool and slice select tool and I'm not going to cover these two tools at all because I don't really work with these tools at all and I think they're just a bit useless. No, I don't really use them. Then over here also ruler tool, node tool and count tool. Pretty simple tools, I'm not going to cover them as well and to be honest with you guys I also never really work with these tools in Photoshop. Alright, back to the crop tool and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'll do is just duplicate my layer quickly here. On here, duplicate the layer, just going to rename that to layer 2. The reason why I do this, if I do mistake, I can always fall back onto my original layer and work very constructive like I always show you guys. Okay, on layer 2, as you guys noticed already, here at the top our application bar has changed as well. Now we are able to enter width, height, resolution, pixels in inch, pixels in centimeters, font image and clear. I never really work a lot with these things. I mostly just go ahead and do my own cropping really wild. Now as I do my cropping, as you guys also noticed again, up here our application bar changed again. So in here our cropped area, that's what I mostly work with. Yes, it should be deleted, not hidden. It should be totally deleted. Then cropped guide. I mostly use ruler over thirds or you could use also grid as you guys can see here or none I mostly use rule over thirds then shield yes I definitely want to work with that shield actually pretty much just shows you what you will crop away so this pretty much helps if you want you can also change it to red foreground color if you want to I like to keep it at black and opacity 75 percent perspective I never really turn that on and that's good to me. Okay, then last step, if you want to accept that, you can tick this box here, or if you don't want to accept that, tick that circle there. Then now, just to show you guys one more last step in the crop tool, you can pretty much also, while once you did your cropping, you can still take these uh, boxes here in the borders and just drag them a little bit and just expand your... Uh, whole cropping if you want to. Now if you want to expand the whole uh, box you can actually hold shift, take the corner again here, the corner box and then just take it all the way down and directly your whole cropping will be symmetrical and changed in a nice direction. So pretty much for the last step what I'm going to do now is pretty much just hit here the tick box and accept that whole cropping. Now just be in mind your whole image has been cropped now, your whole canvas size has been cropped to this size. Not only one layer, your whole canvas size. So just don't forget about that. If you do cropping, let it be your last stage that you're actually doing once you Photoshop. Alright, gonna hit Command Z to just go one step back and now we're back on layer 2, back to a fresh start. Okay, then here at the top as well. I also wanted to show you guys the eyedropper tool and the color sample tool. Quickly to show you guys what the eyedropper tool does, it actually just selects a specific uh, colors that you want to have as your foreground color. Currently we have black or white and black as foreground color. If I'm going now with the eyedropper tool directly on the eye, then you will see a wheel appearing with showing me different uh, pixel colors or like pretty much just the colors of the pixels. Now I know this only appears in CS5, if you have CS4 this wheel won't show up, it will directly just change your colors here. So just have a look for that. Now pretty much what I'm going to do is just select a green foreground color, as you guys can see we've changed that nice foreground color. And say for instance now I want to also get the second foreground color and have the pink lips or maybe just the pink from the lips. So what can I actually do now is just pretty much go down here. Uh, switch my foreground colors, you can also press X if you want to, then they will be changed and I want to change them to a black foreground color and now again with the eyedropper tool just select the lips over here, select the nice pink, drop it and directly have a look down here. I've changed my black color to a pink color and now I have uh, pink and green as my new foreground colors. Now if I want to, I'm doing it with a vacuum continuous full board again today with my brush size, change it on my wheel here very quickly, my brush size and I can already paint with that pink foreground color, switch it with X and then I've got green and also can paint on with that or do whatever I want to with that. For those of you who don't have the brush size thing, you will still have to go up here to the top and just do it over here. Okay yeah, so the next tool I also wanted to show you guys is the color sample tool. This tool pretty much also just selects the 
uh, specific points and gives you RGB readings for that, which can come in handy sometimes. Say for instance now I want to pretty much just get the RGB reading of the dark blues over here. I can put a point over there and directly in my info palette here on the right hand side in my workspace, you will see that down here our first point gives us the RGB reading of 60, 78 and 102. So if I want to have that, I already know, okay, that's my first RGB reading. Then Photoshop also allows you to give you four different points. So say the brown hair over here, I want to select that. There's our second point, as you guys can see over here, second RGB reading. Then say maybe on her nose, the skin, third RGB reading, and say on her jacket, the gray, fourth RGB reading. Okay, so as you guys can see it here is our RGB readings, and this comes in handy sometimes as well. Say for instance, I want to do a new fill layer. I want to do a new layer with color, or just maybe my foreground color, change that again. I can go back down here, double click on my foreground color, and directly copy all these RGB readings into the RGB readings field down here and press OK and directly have that color. Say for instance I'm going to go to layer, new fill layer, solid color over here, select that, OK, say so yeah, just new color fill, OK, then directly a new window will pop up and in here I can copy exactly those RGB readings again, enter them, say OK and I've got a nice new layer with exactly those colors. So this tool also comes in handy sometimes. If you want to get rid of that tool again you can press Alt while you're still in that tool and just go over the point and then you'll see a scissor appearing and you can just deselect those points again to create say maybe new points or just to deselect these points. Okay, yeah, pretty much I'm just going to go quickly out of this again. Back to my layers, going to turn this fill layer off and pretty my layer 2. And that's it, what I wanted to show you guys for today's tutorial. So I hope you guys learned something from today's tutorial. My name is Manny. If you guys still have any questions, please email me to team at mannyphotography.co.za. I'm glad to help you guys with your questions and assist you with that. Okay, so that was my tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next week on another tutorial. Bye-bye.